Thank you, Jesus. I, I, know, I know I gotta preach, but somebody will just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I mean, really, don't, don't, don't do it for people around you. Do, thank you, Jesus, that I'm, I'm sitting here with my babies, Lord. Thank you that out of all the mistakes I made, I'm, I'm in church on a Sunday and my kids are doing all right. Thank you that you saved me and gave me another chance. And what a wonderful Savior. Uh, while, you, while you're standing, I just want to say again to all of those listening to me on 1490 uh, Radio 1, to those who will see this in other countries all over the world, uh, 40, mi 40 million viewers in the USA alone, and nations all over the world will watch us on different networks across the country. Uh, do me one favor, uh, listen to me close, because I'm going to abbreviate the message. Word Church, I'll see you Wednesday, I'll see you next Sunday, Shh. and we'll teach on the deep treasures of God to mature you and take you to another level. But every Easter, rather than listening to me, I really need you praying with me because all of us are on the same team this morning. We're praying that somebody way up there who never asked Christ to come in their life. So, you know, we're not here to be deep. No, I ask God to give me his anointing, the Jesus anointing, the Billy Graham anointing something simple enough that the average person, the dope boy, standing in here with crack in your pocket. Uh, 
the girl that was on the corner last night, uh, the girl that came here with your man, y'all ain't even married, staying together, you my special guest. Because I've seen God take people and just clean them up. And before they knew what happened, something had changed. I mean, 50% of the word church has not been in church all their life. And look around at the largest church in our city. The, lar the largest gathering this morning of any church is right down here. And you're part of that, and God's going to do something. Give, give me 15 to 20 minutes, and, and let's go enjoy our families. But if you have your Bible, John 5. John 5, St. John 5. If you don't have your Bible, I promise you, if you're next to a Word Church member, they'll let you look on their Bible. They're cool like that. Uh, if there's nobody around you, just trust me that I'm reading from the Word of God. If you don't have a Bible, just trust me today and know that I'm going to speak the Word over you. John, the fifth, the fifth chapter. I want to begin with verse 3. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at a certain season into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. Here it is. Check this out. Verse 5. And a certain man was there who had been 38 years in his sickness. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, arise. Take up your pallet and walk. I don't care how long it takes, slap five people and ask them, do you want to get up? Amen. Just, just ask five people, do you want to get up? Don't, don't ask them nothing else. Just ask them one question. Tell them, I don't need the details. Do you want to get up? I, I don't care what you're going through right now. Just ask them, do you want to get up? I don't care how bad it is. Do you want to get up? Praise God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I'm not here to judge, criticize, or ostracize any individual. I'm not here to put you down for the mistakes you've made in your life. I mean, after all, I know more about myself than I know about anybody in this room. I have more dirt on me than I have on any other individual. Whatever you are, wherever you come from, whatever you're going through, if it wasn't for the grace of God, there go I. I'm standing here with this mic in my hand, not because I'm better than you. I'm standing here because God gave me the privilege, the grace to stand here and do something I'm really not worthy of doing. For no matter who is sitting next to you, no matter how churchy they look, no matter how long they've been in church, maybe they were in church before Moby Dick was a guppy, I still come to tell you there's something wrong with them. Look at your neighbor and say, there's something wrong with you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah they may not sell dope. They may not sleep around. But there are some issues in their life that if it wasn't for God's grace, they wouldn't be sitting there derriere in that chair. All of us who know God changed us, stand up and sit back down and say, I feel you, Pastor. Now the text. I only have 10 minutes because sinners can't listen too long. Oh, I feel a sleepy spirit already happening. I feel a macaroni and buffet spirit all over this room. I, I feel Golden Corral and Wendy's and Grandmama's house and Pookie Dem's basement. It's all going down tonight. I feel somebody going to the movies in my spirit. Let me hurry up and let you out of here. In, in, 
in, in the text, we are introduced to a brother who is sitting at the pool of Bethesda. It, it, it's amazing because there are all these sick people who show up at the pool. Remember this, there are all these sick people who show up at the pool. King James says this, King James says this, King James says there were important, now that's not a country word for important, that's another word. <laughs> important literally means sick. So there were important, blind, halt, and withered people there. The NAU says there were sick, blind, lame, and withered. The Message Bible says hundreds of sick people blind, crippled, and paralyzed. Mm -hmm. The great number of disabled people pictures the sad spiritual plight of the world. In a more specific sense, it pictures the spiritual plight of thousands of people in this arena. I mean, think about it. All these people were laying there in a sad condition, waiting on a move. You know, I dealt with this text about three years ago at the Word Church in our old location, and God brought this back to me because he showed me an aspect of it that I had missed the last time. Watch this. There is this pool. This is going to trip you out. There is this pool that people actually believe that once a year an angel would come down and stir up this pool. Whoever then got in the pool first would be healed of all their diseases. So all the blind folk, uh, all the withered folk, all the paralyzed folk would show up at the pool waiting on once a year whereby only one person could get healed. Hmm. Now, now, now think about this, whereby only one person could get healed. Now most people read this text and they look at it literally, but there's an issue. It'll get gooder, but I got to give you the hard part first. Stay here. The earliest manuscripts omit these words, which appear to be a late insertion to explain why the water was stirred. Think about this. People believe that an angel came, stirred it, according to local tradition, the first one in, but the Bible nowhere teaches this kind of superstition, a situation which would be most cruel, a cruel contest for many ill people. You see, God ain't the type of God that wants to play games where he lines up a hundred sick folk and says, whoever get in first, you're healed. Now they're competing. You know what I like about God? There are thousands of us geographically positioned in this room, but don't you know God can hook you up while he's hooking your neighbor up at the same time? That's why you don't have to be a hater because just because your neighbor get blessed don't mean you can't get blessed. I got a Jesus that while he's giving me a car, he can give you a man. Somebody shout out, feel your pastor. I got a God that knows how to give me a house while he's giving you an apartment building. God can bless everybody and that's why there's not a jealous bone in my body. I'm so happy when other people get blessed because I got a God that can hook all of us up at the same time. What? were they waiting on? Shh. The Bible says they were waiting on a move. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know if I'll get out this point or not because it's the richest thing I'll probably say today. What were they waiting on? Feel me, young brothers. Feel me, people who haven't been in church in a year. Feel me, people who are in church right now. Feel me, people who didn't even go to your church this morning because maybe you didn't think it would speak into your life. Feel me, people who are watching me all over the world. Feel me, somebody who's sitting in a crack house watching me. Feel me, somebody who's in the basement watching me, in your bedroom, lonely watching me. Feel me, what were they waiting on? They were waiting on a move. The text says they were waiting on the moving of the world. Do you know, do you know what folk have been waiting on? Folk have been waiting on a move of the church. 
come here. If you really want to know why we're filled up like this on a Sunday morning, why young brothers are here, brothers with hats on their head, baggy jeans, dope boys, girls who ain't never been to church, old brothers who said, I need Jesus in my life, church people, Christians, do you know why we're so full? Not because the pastor is all of that. Trust me, he's not. The reason why people are here is because people have been looking for a move of the church. You see, I'm tired of church as usual. I'm tired of churches on every corner, but nobody's doing nothing for the community or for me or for my family. I'm tired of walking up in there. He preached the same sermon a different way every week, put me to sleep. I don't feel it. I need somebody that will look me in my face, talk about my man, my husband, my money, my sex life, because all that is relevant to me. I need a church that will be daring to challenge the social norm and challenge the city to wake up because they are hurting people. You know why you're here. You're here because you've been looking for a move. Please understand what you didn't fool around and walked up in. You didn't fool around and walked into a move of God. And don't fool yourself. When God start moving, there isn't nothing you can do about it. Something's about to change in your life, whether you want it to or not. God's about to shake something. Please catch this. You have entered into a church that has a pastor with a Caleb spirit. <laughs> Because the Bible says in Numbers 14 that Caleb had another spirit. One version says he had a different spirit. Yes, I'm not all of that, but Caleb was different than the rest of those children of Israel because Caleb believed he could take it by force. Caleb said, let's go up there and fight because we can possess it at once. Please look at me. If you're looking for church as usual, you need to raise up right now. But if you're looking for a brother that would tell you no matter what Cleveland been doing, God's about to shift something in this whole city because we have another spirit. We believe that no matter how bad you've been, God can pick you up and change your life right now. We believe it's called, we are called to establish something different in this city. I don't care what you're going through, baby. This is not your grandmama's church. Tell somebody to say, this is not your, no, no, no. In grandmama's church, you had to have on a hat, stockings, girdle, wig, toupee, weave or something. But I come to tell you, I don't care what you got on. I hope you dress respectable. But other than that, I just don't care because Jesus is not stutting what you got on. Jesus is stutting what's in your heart. I know they talking about me because we don't dress like church people. But slap somebody and say, I got another spirit. Go ahead. Now, now tell your neighbor, I'm not like regular church people because church people have to wait on certain parts to shout but I'll shout during the offering I'll shout during the intro I'll shout during the three points and the point because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me I can't sit up here and be cute if you got another spirit stand up and high five your neighbor tell him I got another spirit no, stop somebody and tell them, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I made it through. You don't know how far I've come. Girl, I don't come to church to play. I played already. I come to get my shout on. I come to be a better wife. I come to try to be celibate. I'm trying to get my money together. I need peace in my heart. I don't want church. I want the kingdom. What I think is interesting. He had been there 38 years. No, no, come here, come here, no, come here. 38 years, this brother has been laying next to a pool, trying to be the first one in. For 38 years. I have some problems with that. I just do, forgive me. But, but after 38 years, it seemed like to me he could have at least been slick enough. I mean, after year one, year two, year three, year four, 
it seemed like he would have been watching everybody else saying, okay, I see how to do that. Now, now, now call me crazy, but I'm just not a regular brother. I have a Caleb spirit. Now, I understand that his legs didn't work. He's some sort of paraplegic. He, he can't get around the best, but I don't know about you, but after 38 years, even if I couldn't walk, I just would have been scooting one foot every year. It, you see, sometimes you gotta scoop before you walk. Sometimes you gotta crawl before you walk. You see, is there anybody in here like me? You got tenacity, and you may not have everything you want, but you ain't gonna lay there and watch your life pass you by. Now, now maybe I'm crazy, but after 38 years, I would have scooted a little bit every year. And I see some folk who just scooting right now, just fighting to survive, fighting to get your mind back and your family don't know what's up with you. Touch somebody and say, I'm just scooting, that's all, go ahead. Tell them one scoot at a time. And maybe I'm crazy, but I would have got my behind right next to the water and when it rolled, I just would have rolled in. Slap somebody and say, roll out, baby, go ahead. God, God, God told me to tell you, there's some folk getting on your nerves. Slap somebody and say, roll out, go ahead. Tell them if you can't walk out, roll out. Don't, don't be hanging around folk that ain't producing nothing. Don't you stay in the same situation another day longer. Slap three people and tell them I'm about to roll. Man. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but is there anybody in here saved or unsaved that is sick of your same situation? Sick of your bank account? Sick of dumb family members? Sick of people talking the same old stuff? Sick of people who aren't going anywhere? Sick of going to bed with somebody to touch you but don't love you? Sick of it all? If you're sick of it, somebody shout, I'm sick of this. My God, my God. I got touch somebody and tell them I'm sick of this now. I'm about to make a move. I'm about to go to another level. I'm finna get my money right, my mind right. I got to get something together. I can't stay in this same situation too long. Time! Time ought to be a most valued asset. 38 years, let's not look at it literally, but let's look at it figurative 38 years. No, not a literal 38 years, but some of you have been in some relationship for a figurative 38 years. It might only be seven, but it's a figurative 38 years. You, you've had the same amount of money in your savings account for 38 years. You, 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 you've been hanging out, breaking up, and making up with the same dumb person. If they didn't change in 89, 90, 91, but we got a child together. As I said, 2003, 2004, slap somebody and say, you better roll, you better roll, you better roll, you better roll. You see, time is precious. Uh, Bishop Jake says, maximize this moment. This is your time. Can I speak in your life and tell you, if God let me see next Sunday, I'll be 35 years old, which means half of my life is almost gone. The Bible says he gives you three score and 10, 35, 35, 70. So half my life is gone. What am I going to do? Time is precious. I'm leaving after service, going to the airport, be in Houston, next city the next week. Got to run, got to preach, got to love my wife, got to raise my children, got to get you saved, got to raise up some men, got to help some pastors, got to make some money, got to fix my credit, got to work out, can't lay around. I'm getting too old for that touch somebody and tell them time is precious what are you going to do with you oh maybe y'all maybe y'all not like me I know I know the world says I got people to see places to go and things to do but Christians say I got people to save places to possess and things to subdue touch your neighbor say that it hit you Tuesday people to save places to possess things to subdue you see I got people to get saved I got places to possess I got property to buy then I got things I gotta subdue or take authority over I'm taking authority over my mind my emotions my body my wife my family I can't lay back apathetically touch some Somebody and say do something how can you sit back and let your life slip away 
because you're scared that you can't make it without that person. You're, you're scared to get out of your comfort zone. I'm trying to figure out after 38 years, the brother should have made some change. When are you going to make your move? I, I'm called to challenge you. I love you from my heart. I wish I could reach out and hug every person individually, but it's hard to run game on me. It's, it's hard to tell me what you tell your woman. She goes to bed with you. I don't. She, she's caught up in how she feels, so you got her mind. You ain't got mine. You, you can tell your mama who spoiled you and loved you how hard it is out here. I'm so tired of all you brothers making excuses. Now look at me. Not the best looking, not the most athletic. Rare.